All right, guys, so we're back with a brand new video. I'm going to show you guys how to use keyboard input so you can create more interactive programs. So let's create a new file, call it input.rs, and we're going to just implement the main function. So in order to use keyboard input, we need to import a library called stdio, and we use the use keyword. Okay, you can see right over here that this is part of the Rust standard library. Now, basically libraries, for those who don't know, libraries are just simply pre-written code that are all collected together, and you can import them so you can reuse that code over and over again to build out your applications. Okay, so you might use, you know, the core language's library. You might need to install someone else's library and use it. There's a whole bunch, but let's go ahead and just do a simple print line, and we're going to ask the user to enter in their name and what we want to do is we want to declare a variable that's going to actually hold that input from the keyboard so we're going to use the let keyword and we're going to use the mut keyword mutate because this variable needs to be mutable this basically means that the variable is going to be able to change and we're going to call it my underscore name and what we're going to do is we need to create an empty string so we actually can't just do single quotes and leave it like this we need to use the string structure this is part of the core language okay and we're going to use the new function. And this is going to just create an empty string for us. That way we can mutate the value of my underscore name. Okay, I'm gonna go in depth later on the differences between this string structure and just having just quotation marks like that. So let's go ahead and reference IO. Oh, you need to actually put a semicolon up top there. And we're gonna call STDN, which stands for standard input. We're going to call read underscore line. And this is going to expect a string. So we're going to need to pass in ampersand mut my name. So basically we're passing in the string that we want to actually mutate. So we need to pass in ampersand mut first space and then the name of the variable that we want to mutate, which is my underscore name. Now an error might happen. So let's just go ahead and do dot expect. So this is a panic. And we'll just say failed to read line. And sometimes you might have errors that might happen throughout your program. So for example, if something goes wrong with reading the current line, a panic is going to happen. It says panics if the value is an error, and it's going to show the panic message. So it's good practice to have the dot expect. And you can see right over here that if we don't call dot expect, we're going to get a warning in the compiler. The compiler is going to give us a warning. Okay. So let's go ahead and now print out the value of our input of our name and let's compile the program again and run it so now enter your name your name is anson perfect okay obviously we can also type in anything else so max we can even type in numbers as well because numbers are also part of strings they can be a subset of strings now what if we wanted to input in our age but let's say for example if we were to input our age it's going to be read in as a string but at some point in the program we might want to update the value of age maybe add it by one we can't actually add one to a string type and i'll show you a quick example so let's first declare a variable called my underscore age and we're going to again create an empty string using the new function and we're going to go ahead and just do io standard input read line and notice how the read line it's on the next line you don't have to put it on the next line you can put it all in one line i'm just putting it on the next line because it looks much more neater and because now i want to mutate my underscore age i'm going to pass an ampersand mute my underscore age so the variable that we want to mutate and if we don't call dot expect it's going to give us a warning so let's just call expect and we'll just say fail to read line in case it happens okay it's good practice let me print out the age so your age is and let's go ahead and just print out a message telling them to enter in their age so let's recompile okay perfect now let's say if i wanted to add one to my age so we're going to take the my age variable we're going to assign it to my underscore age plus one so in rust i know we haven't gone over arithmetic yet but just a sneak peek you can actually do arithmetic operations in programming and you can just use the plus operator which means add so what we want to do is we want to add one to my age okay but you're going to see that if i try to compile this it's going to give us an error and it says expected a string but found integer and what's going on is it's actually trying to concatenate both of these values together, but you actually cannot concatenate the string type with a number. If I change this to like the string version of one, it's going to be fine. But we are going to get a warning though. That's just saying that it's not being used, but don't worry about it. We're basically trying to add a string type with a numeric type. 
So what we want to do is we want to convert the input that was written as a string to the appropriate data type. Because you're probably wondering, well, yes, age should be a numeric data type, prefer preferably an integer. So let's go ahead and declare a variable, call it age. And since we're going to update the value of our age, let's just actually declare it as a mutable variable. And one thing that I should mention is that I can't actually declare another variable called my underscore age because variables, the names need to be unique. So I can't just declare a variable called my underscore age down over here. So I have to give it a different name. We're going to specify the type as an unsigned integer. And we're going to go ahead and reference my underscore age. And we're going to call the trim function on this string over here. This is going to allow us to trim all of the beginning and trailing white space. Okay. And then we're going to call dot parse. And then we want to call dot expect at the end to say parsed incorrectly. So don't worry, I'm going to explain everything. Whoops. So let's talk a little bit about what's going on right over here. Let me first move all of this on their own individual line. So right over here, I'm declaring a mutable variable called age. I'm giving it the data type of an unsigned 32 bit integer. We could also have given it a smaller size. We could have specified 16 bits or even eight bits. Okay, but let's just leave it at 32 for now. And then we are referencing my underscore age because this is the string that we want to parse to a number. Okay, so if I call dot trim, that's going to trim all the white space. If I call dot parse, that parse is actually going to convert the value to the appropriate data type. And the appropriate data type is going to be an unsigned integer 32 bits, which is what we're specifying here. And then we call dot expect because something might go wrong. And let's just go ahead and print out the new value. So your updated age. Oh wait, whoops, you have to add it. So let's do age equals age plus one. So now we can actually add one to age. So whatever we enter in for age, we're converting it to a numeric type. Then we're adding one to age and then assigning that new value to age. So let's go ahead and just print this to the console. Let's run our program, no errors. Type our name, 22. Notice how it says your update age is 23. Now let me actually run this again. And notice how if I type something like Anson, it's going to give us an error and it says thread main panic that parsed incorrectly. This is our message inside the expect parentheses over here. We can change up this message to whatever we want. Okay, we can change that up. Let's compile. So let's type Anson and let's just type, let's just type A. See, it says parse number incorrectly. And that gives us insight on what could possibly be going wrong with our program. And that's pretty much it for reading keyboard input. All right, so that's pretty much it for this video. Hopefully this made sense, and I'll see you guys in my next one. Peace.